the hippocampus. And what is a hippocampus doing? I've actually photographed the hippocampus. It is like a small little, it looks like an ear, actually. How does that store memories? Get this, dude. Mm. Get this, right? Mm. The hippocampus is generating, this is a Quanta article, generating random noise all the time. When something really important happens, when something salient, we talked about that, and mm -hmm. you know, if, if all of a sudden I'm walking through the woods and I find a blueberry bush, Everything that I was doing, all the experiences that I was having, the hippocampus records that by isolating the noise pattern that it was generating at that moment and, and zip files all of the experience that I was having in, in the zip file compression algorithm is tuned to the noise pattern that the, the hippocampus was generating at the time. So in the future, if I want to recall, oh, where was I when that bush happened? Your hippocampus actually generates that noise pattern again, which bootloads, unzips the, the experience into your brain again, and you run that experience over again. Isn't that amazing? Wow. But they're like, the hippocampus is just generating these random patterns, and then every once in a while, stuff you really need to remember, boom, gets locked into whatever random pattern was it was doing while the thing you needed to remember was happening. So babies and toddlers aren't super rational or self-aware, but they're watching everyone, everything and everyone around them and soaking it up like a sponge right in those hippocampus zip uh, files, unconsciously. right? Unconsciously. Yes. Um, our early experience as babies and young children codes our brain with these... For how to deal with stuff. How to deal with this kind of stuff. It's like a distillation of Mary Ainsworth work on parenting styles. Like, are we, am I a responsive person? Am I a cold person? They're recording the way their mother and our caretakers took care of them. We're molded by our early limbic resonance partners. Like our elephant taking similar paths down the decision tree of behaviors. Like we saw mom's elephant go this way, so we are more likely to go that way. We're imprinted, it's imprinted on us by our caregivers early in childhood. Continuing this behavior as music metaphor here, quote, a child enveloped in a style of relatedness learns the special intricacies and rhythms of the emotional symphony. The child distills instances into simple tenets. I can barely say these name quotes, dude. Distilling instances into tenets. <laughs> simple tenets, yeah. It's a fruit -fruit way of saying kids get intuition. That's, That's what they're talking about. Instances into tenets is <laughs> intuition. Limbic resonance with your family as a young child every day when your brain is more pliable creates emotional patterns that we follow throughout your life. And by the way, this is not groundbreaking stuff. Like if you talk to any psychiatrist, psychologist, you're gonna talk they're going to go through your childhood because they know that you were coded with certain attractor states and neuron, you know, repeated neuron pathways from your childhood. So they're going to try and kind of show you those and help you kind of think over them, so think through them. Mean? 